Colubrids, like that little baby hognose snake, can make some of the best pets that you could possibly own. And today we're going to go over this little guy and the five best colubrids that you could possibly own. I'm Adam, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Let's get it started off, number five, garter snakes. Now, a lot of garter snakes, uh, well there's different species of garter snakes. This is not one of them by the way, this is a hognose snake which we might get to later on in the video. Now even if you've never been to a zoo or a, a reptile shop or anything like that, you've probably seen a garter snake anyway if you live in North America because that is the most widely distributed snake in all of North America. Now different species, but they're in more areas than any other snake in the entire continent. You can find garter snakes as far south as you can go in the entire continent and beyond, and as far north as the Northwest Territories. If you don't know what the Northwest Territories are, they look like this this time of year, and garter snakes still survive. And they also live in places that look like this. This is a very unique species, or a very unique group of species, but they all have one thing in common. They stay relatively small. Now, we're talking about four feet is a pretty big garter snake. Some of them stay as small as two feet. It depends on what type you're looking for. And that means that you can keep them in smaller enclosures. So if you want to keep your garter snake in a 40 gallon enclosure, you can do that. Some species, a 20 gallon is fit for an entire life of a garter snake. What's actually really interesting and something I wouldn't recommend with most species, garter snakes, you can go habitate. So if you want to have a bunch of garter snakes in the same enclosure, you can do that. Of course, do your research on how to do this, but it is possible where with most snakes, you probably wouldn't want to keep four or five ball pythons in the same enclosure. Several species of garter snake, you don't even have to feed rodents to if you don't want to. They're gonna eat things like fish or worms if you choose to feed them that instead. Because a lot of people don't want to feed their animal live rodents or frozen thawed rodents, which is what you should do by the way. So this is a great opportunity to get away from that but still own a snake. Also, they're live bearers, which is very unique because most colubrids, they're not. <laughs> they're not live bearers, they lay eggs. Garter snakes are on a different level, they actually produce babies inside of them and they come on out just like a human. Well, probably not going to have 20 humans pop out at the same time, but garter snakes can and that's pretty cool. And just to round it out, uh, there's one drawback with garter snakes, I would say, I don't know, some species can be a little bit more nippy, like not totally, you can definitely tame down garter snakes, but they're more actually likely to musk on you, which is like this foul gelatin-like thing that comes from their well, it's a poop shoot, basically. They're cloaca, right, where they'd normally poop from. So, I don't know. It's it's kind of gross, but eh, garter snakes, in, in general, are pretty darn cool. And that's number five. Number four, king snakes. All different types. There's a bunch. They're gonna, you're going to find them all over North America and parts of South America as well. And they come in all different shapes, colors, and sizes. Well, I mean, basically all the same shape. They look like little tubes, right? But scarlet king snakes they only get to about two feet sometimes and other snakes like uh desert king snake california king snakes can get five feet or larger so up to six feet sometimes so it really depends what you want you've got a whole variation and in terms of color you can have that one 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 you can have whatever the heck you want if it comes to color with snakes and i i think that's pretty darn cool what makes them great Easy temperature, easy humidity, most of the time. Now they do vary, obviously, because they come from different parts of the continent, or continents, uh, but generally, you're not gonna have a king snake that needs 100% humidity and, you know, 140 degree basking spot, so uh, they're pretty darn easy. They're all sorta similar with different variations, but all the way around, no matter which one you look at, none of them are super duper hard to care for, in general. Now, there might be a king snake that I'm not thinking of because it's rare, uh, throw in the comment section anyway. Now what's cool about king snakes is they're king snakes, which means they eat other snakes. Now I don't know if that's where they got the name king snake. I think it is, but of course if I say it with an absolute, you're gonna roast me in the comment section. King snakes eat other snakes, almost always. So this is something that's interesting because, I mean, cobras do that as well, but you're never gonna find like Ball pythons generally don't eat other ball pythons. So they're a little bit different than some other species of colubrids. Rat snakes, for example, generally don't eat each other, uh, with exceptions, of course. King snakes generally tame down pretty easily, but they they are known for having a little bit of a temper and, uh, you know, kind of 
being a little bit nippy when they're young and they have a high food drive which is awesome because if you don't want a snake that's going to go off food for no reason kink snakes in general will not do that some great options if you're looking into them uh gray banded kink snakes desert kink snakes mexican black kink snakes those are really great options there's a bunch of other ones as well uh, but those are the ones you're going to see most commonly they're pretty darn cheap to get into and the upkeep of them and the maintenance of them and their husbandry requirements are not that difficult number three corn snakes yeah you thought they were going to be a lot higher on the list right well you know my luck with corn snakes what makes them awesome right off the bat generally very docile right i have not had this experience the last couple i've had for whatever reason super cage defensive just want to bite you but for the most part corn snakes are really easy to handle they're really fun to handle too because although they can be quick a lot of the times they move thoughtfully that's a weird way to describe a snake movement but in my experience thoughtfully is a good way to describe it now corn snakes are a type of rat snake and there's a bunch of different rat snakes that are great pets they're great colubrid pets uh, that you can have but I think corn snakes are the most common uh, they're not super expensive there's a bunch of different morphs if you're into that type of thing that's something that a lot of people want as well maybe you want you know a corn snake but you want it to be kind of white or kind of like really orange or not to have scales those work as well and you have those options with corn snakes and it's not going to cost you thousands of dollars to get into something that looks pretty darn cool and again easy temperature easy humidity corn snakes around five feet is generally where you're going to find them as adults they don't get super big they don't get super big around they can live off of i mean if you want to feed them like a not even a small rat but like a, a weanling rat or a rat pup that's as big as you're generally going to need to feed them uh, you can feed them adult mice their entire life if you want to which is a little bit cheaper than say a ball python that will need a medium-sized rat once they get to adulthood especially females and again just kind of as a common theme here they don't need a big space so a corn snake i always like to say 75 gallon i just like bigger enclosures but you could probably get away with a 40 gallon if you want to learn more about corn snakes bam i've got you covered there's a, a care guide we did last year and uh that's it's corn snakes num number three awesome snakes now number two milk snakes but milk snakes are king snakes i know i know they are but I wanted to separate them because I actually have a milk snake and I can show you handling a milk snake, right? I think they're awesome because they look so different. There's a few different options for king snakes that have like a tricolor or a banding to them, like most milk snakes do. Although not all milk snakes look like this, some of them look like this. But I think milk snakes are really fun because they are common and they don't cost a lot of money and to get into the morphs it doesn't cost a lot of money they're pretty docile they're great feeders they don't take up huge enclosures um you know different species get different sizes but four to five feet are really big milk snakes like the pueblo that i have is probably only going to grow to about four feet uh, as a female so they're not huge they're not monsters they eat well for you they're probably not gonna you know bite you as long as you handle them well and I think as a just a general guideline with colubrids, they're a little bit more squirmy and can be harder to handle than say a ball python or you know a boa or something like that. But they can hold on to you for the most part because they are constrictors, with the exception of like garter snakes and maybe another one that's coming up. And as a general rule, a lot of species of colubrids, milk snakes included, and everything on this list so far and going forward. Are pretty hardy so if the hot spot is a few degrees off or you know the humidity drops or goes too high for a day or two your snake likely isn't going to get sick they're not super stressed out uh, by simple things like that they're not a rainbow boa where if the humidity drops for three days you're going to find a dead snake they're not really like that and i think milk snakes are a great option if you want something that is not forgiving because you're lazy but forgiving because you might go away for two days at a time and not be able to monitor if the humidity is dropped below a certain level because most milk snakes they're gonna have room temperature type humidity anyway and for those people who want something impressive that looks impressive but don't want to get into something that is venomous for example i think one of your best options is a colubrid that is easily found and easy to manage at a good size and just kind of the whole package of what i like in snakes and what you might like too is that you know like they've got this really cool banding like they've got this really cool color pattern uh not all of them but pueblins hondurans things like that and there's a bunch of different morphs you can get into as well so i think if you want something i don't want to say flamboyant but impressive 
a milk snake might be exactly what you need. And number one, you guessed it, hognose snakes. Isn't this like the cutest little thing? This is a little baby. This is one of the very first snakes that I ever produced. Um, a little bit wiggly, which is why she wasn't part of most of the video. But hognose snakes, I think, may be the best pet colubrid that you could possibly own. They stay very small. We're talking like this is a male, so he might get, like if, if we're lucky, he might get to two feet, probably one and a half is probably a more realistic expectation of this dude. Whereas dad, he was only about a foot and a half. And he was one of the bigger males that I've got. The male that I'm breeding this year is probably about maybe a foot. I don't know, this is Nikki. He's considerably smaller, maybe about 65 grams. This little guy here, 14 grams. <laughs> We're talking like super duper small. What's interesting about hognose snakes is they don't constrict their prey. So like normal reptiles, they'll hold on to you or normal snakes, I should say, like a normal colubrid, if I want to correct myself for a third time, they'll hold on to you. They'll be around your neck. Uh, they can be, you know, around your fingers, around your wrist. Hognose snakes aren't really going to do that, which is why I keep like putting her back or putting him back in my lap because he's squirmy and he kind of starts falling off of you. He doesn't have that constricting type of I don't know, muscular structure that say a corn snake would or a milk snake or basically anything else on the list. Well, besi besides garter snakes, I guess, too. Hognose snakes, they don't need a bunch of space at all. A full grown adult male can live its entire life in a 20 gallon. I'd rather see you give it a 40. I always like better space. Uh, females, 40 gallon is perfect. I think it's really a great pet if you want a smaller type of enclosure, but still giving the animal the best possible life, not skimping out on size. Now, if there's two drawbacks to hognose snakes, uh, very simple. First of all, they're finicky eaters. So if you think ball pythons are finicky eaters, hognose snakes, they go one of one, two ways. Either you're going to have to do everything in your power to get them to eat, or they're going to try to eat everything, including your fingers. Now, the great thing is they don't really bite you unless they think you're food. Most of the time, defensive strikes are something that hognose snakes don't do, but they can have very aggressive feeding responses. But on the flip side of that, sometimes, like literally for my boy Onyx here, Onyx, when's the last time you ate? Hmm? Why won't you eat? Onyx last ate five weeks ago and he's still a baby. So we're trying to grow him up, but it's a little bit more difficult sometimes with hognose snakes because they'll just go off feed for no reason it seems like. And there's a couple ways you can get them to go back onto food. You can start scenting with things like tuna or sardines or frog legs or something like that. Never go catch a wild frog and rub a pinky mouse on there. You never know what they're gonna have in the wild, the frogs. But if you can get these guys to eat, I don't know, pretty good animal. The only other drawback is they are rear fang venomous, technically. So although it might not give you much of a reaction at all, if anything, it can. It has the potential to make your hands swell up even maybe a little bit of minor blistering, stuff like that. And people have even uh, cited having like wooziness. Most people though, when they get bit, feel nothing at all. There's no reaction whatsoever. It's not a true venom, like, it's not a venom that's injected. It's a venom that's kind of chewed into you uh, through these smooth teeth that they have. If you wanna watch more about rear fang venomous snakes, bam, you can go right there. But all of those two drawbacks, don't forget, look at how cute these things are. These are, absolutely adorable. That's why I got them in the first place because they're not very likely to bite you unless they think you're food, which is great. When I had my first snake, that was my first snake. And more importantly, they've got great attitudes. They're diurnal, they're awake when you are, if you are awake during the day, of course. And they've got this curiosity about them. They always look like they're present, where some reptiles kind of look derpy, like I don't know what's going on. It feels like hognose snakes really do know what's going on. So if a small shovel-faced little hognose snake is what you think is right for you, watch this video. Think about it. So there you go. On behalf of Onyx and me, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, smash the subscribe button and the like button. I'd appreciate that. We do videos twice a week and every video topic I take from the comment section. So you guys pick the videos. What should I do next week? Pop it on down there. And because I do videos twice a week, see ya on Thursday.